Yeah, so I'm back on coffee, and my gut is absolutely fucking nuked. Nuclear. It's unbelievable how fucking poisonous this shit is, but it feels so fucking good. It's just like a battle with yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you if you tip over, there is a threshold with coffee where when you fucking OD on it in the morning, you're just in, like, a fucking daily warfare psychological battle with yourself. And if you remember some of my old, old school scripture and some of my emails, I used to have an email list a couple years ago. I said the first battle of the day has to be won between yourself. So what I'm doing is I got a lot of things cooking right now. And I'm actually releasing... And this is a super, super early bird, early bird special. But I am doing an intensive in-person three-day weekend. It's going to be in late November. And it's going to be very intimate. And it's going to be in a very, very high-end setting. I'm basically going to rent out a fucking temple with fucking candelabra. The ambience is going to be fucking sick. But basically... I'm going to take 20 people max, which is about all I care to handle. And we're going to have a three-day straight weekend. I'm going to pry open cavities, and I'm going to be goring oxes. It's going to be a life-changing event, and you're going to have to feel the verve. You're going to have to, the, the verve is going to have to be palpable. And that's why I really want to concretize a lot of my philosophy, and that's why I want to take this shit to the real world. Because eventually you got to get offline and you got to actually concretize principles. And so I want you to feel the thunder cackle in the real world. It's going to be very expensive, by the way. But if this is something that interests you, you can jump in my DMs right now. Uh, I'll feed you the details before it officially releases this week. I got a fucking nifty lander i got a whole digital brochure that i'm going to be releasing but if you want to jump in now you know these spots are going to fill the fuck up fast so like i said 20 heads max three-day event we're going to do some groundbreaking work there uh i do want to discuss i want to kind of sweep you guys across a different plane this morning i really want you guys to comprehend the notion that the realms that men are attracted to are realms of the feminine, realms of the abstract. That's why men truly do get their rocks off from psychological thrills, from adventure, from experiences, from power, the intangible realms, the feminine realms is what draws men in. And, and I'm here to tell you that this is why, to a sub-degree, men don't give a flying fuck about material things. Material things are what women are attracted to. Do you understand? A man doesn't give a fuck if he's sleeping on a fucking futon or sleeping on the high steps of a castle. We'll make it work. We'll make it work, but bling, trucks, fucking money that gets extruded into physical objects, shiny shit. That's what women are fucking attracted to. You know what I'm saying? So men are, women love the, the physical properties. That's why women are drawn in to those realms. But men, we get our confidence, we build our foundation in the psychological and there's no roller coaster. There's no sucker. Sucker, that's S-U-C-C-O-R. For those of you clever linguistic motherfuckers, sucker. There's no evacuation that can draw you away from the psychological building blocks and power blocks that make you a man. That's why I've always told you being a man is a state of being. It's a state of being. There is no action and I want to emphasize this. There's no action that you can take as a man to be a man, if that makes sense. It ain't billions. 
It ain't millions. It ain't fucking trillions. There's no garment. There's no cape. There's nothing you can adorn your skin that can make you a fucking man. Do you understand? It's when you're laying in repose. The superposition of where you stand right now. What radiates and emanates from inside your fucking dome. That's what makes you a fucking man. And I had a tweet last week that I think deserves expansion. It was a heater. And it was about how men can take the most aggravated losses and salvage them for some of the biggest wins that they could possibly imagine in their life. And this is, this is true on a scale, if you're, especially if you're blazing your own trail. You know what I mean? And, and the reason why there's people in your life who will panic and freak out and flip out if you've made disastrous mistakes because they're preaching to you from their place of discipline, not your own. It's been proven time and time again throughout the annals of history that the story ain't over until the fucking fat lady sings. So if you're caught in the muck and you've made disastrous mistakes on your version of a heroic mission, story ain't over yet. Story ain't over yet. What the fuck are you panicking for? Because when you go that, to a place that no man has ever been before, the avenues and opportunities are so bountiful, it's incomprehensible, it's inconceivable the way you can wrangle and lasso and transmogrify a loss into the biggest fucking win of your life. But here's the key, here's the secret. You have to be monolithically obsessed with one thing because when desperate times do come at your doorstep, motherfuckers will tap out and they'll take an awful opportunity, an awful opportunity just to fucking get some pep in their step or get some food in their belly, whatever the fuck it is. And now you are completely off target. Whereas the motherfucker who's sticking to one thing and putting up shots and swinging wildly and missing and missing and fucking things up and making hundreds of mistakes. When he rejects shitty opportunities in the midst of that, mired in that concentric circle, what he's really doing is he's pulling back on the drawstring of that bow. And when that bow string snaps, that serrated arrow that piercing fire tipped arrow is going through fucking walls. The impact is devastating. He's at the bottom of the slingshot. And if you have the mental prowess and the mental capability of sitting at the bottom of the slingshot when nothing's going right, loss after loss after loss, despair after despair, and you're at the bottom of the slingshot, you best believe when those bands snap back, <laughs> you're, you're catapulting through the fucking skies higher than you possibly could have ever been before. Astronomical heights can come just from focusing and stabilizing your eyes and redoubling your efforts, looking through that aperture, looking through that lens, never fucking pivoting monolithically obsessed with one objective and never veering, never veering, never lowering your standards ever under any circumstance. And that's where these crazy motherfuckers are born. You look at a motherfucker like Elon Musk. <laughs> it's not even about the mission at times. That motherfucker just wants to feel alive wants to feel the breath of death, of death on his fucking neck, letting things pile up, just letting fucking things pile up and letting the fire lick at your feet. And sometimes you have to sit there and let the fire somewhat engulf you so that you can recharge. 
And then once you're in it, you realize it ain't all that bad. But that's the hardest part for motherfuckers is motherfuckers really start to panic. And then they take dog shit opportunities. They start banging mids. They start fucking just taking horrible opportunities across the board. And you never let the miracle happen. You didn't allow it to happen because you couldn't hold on. That's why, look, IQ is a very malleable force. Very, very malleable. It's pliable. Because there's things that get factored into IQ that are completely intangible, like persistence, like resiliency. I, I will venture to tell you, I don't believe for one fucking millisecond that it's IQ that took humans to the top of the food chain. I think it's resiliency. I think it's resiliency. The, the, the brain, the human mind is very likely the most indestructible entity known to this universe. There is nothing that you will observe in nature as indestructible and as elastic as the human brain. And a lot of times when you guys look at geniuses or brilliant works of art, what you're seeing is just the product of someone who was resilient enough to get through the hard times. Had nothing to do with intelligence. It's just a gritty, tenacious, pig-headed motherfucker that was too stubborn to back down. You know what I mean? I actually think genius to a large degree is a psyop. The, the mainstream culture shoves geniuses in your face and they make you tap out because most people when they see when they see a commensurate work of art they don't understand that the common folk the average folk can actually make addendums to the greatest works that have ever been completed do you understand like we live in the era of the average man so the average man through his own psychonautical voyaging can actually make referendums and addendums to the best works that have ever been created. And a lot of this is happening by mistake, just through, live, just through living and publishing thoughts and ideas over and over again. Addendums are being made. Footnotes are being created. You know what I'm saying? And so people see genius and it just makes them tap out. I, don't, I even believe that some people were cosmically designed cosmically sculpted by nature to tackle certain problems so what looks like a genius to you actually was just very easy for that particular individual in that era like that that person was designed to solve that particular fucking issue and that's just what a lot of it is like i'll be very 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 shrewd um crude with you right now ever never met a brilliant jew i think the whole ashkenazi iq thing is a psyop what you have to understand about Jewish culture is that they rush into the hottest fields. They have the audacity and the balls to rush into the hottest industries. And that's been sort of hardwired and baked into their culture. And so what looks like high IQ to you is just simply fucking someone being audacious and having massive fucking balls. And that's just what a lot of this shit is. It really is a game of attrition. How long can you last? You know, there's a, there's a Taoist saying. It's one of my favorites. It's very esoteric. I believe in Taoism, there is a quote that compares the man riding the wave to the drunkard. And in this quote, it says something to the effect of the drunk who gets thrown from the carriage doesn't get injured the way a normal person would because his spirit is whole. I'm going to say that again. The drunkard who gets thrown from the carriage does not get injured like a normal person would because his spirit is whole. And this, this kind of goes back to my point about leaning into your nature. It, the, the shell on, in the male hardware is very, very, very thick. That's why when you're on the mission, 
when you're on the mission, you can dress like a fucking hobo. You can go weeks at a time without shaving, showering, fucking manicuring, taking care of your appearance. Fuck, on, on the mission, you can even go six months without getting laid. And you don't give a fuck. Because all that does is just nuke the shell. The spirit is intact. The spirit bends, but it does not break. And so when you are committed like a madman to one single cause, and you know that you have entered this war for life, because winning a war is a myth, by the way. You only win battles in life. Once you enter a war, you have entered for life. You ain't ever getting out. There's no extrication. You're stuck once you, once you enter a war. And so when it comes to the mission, you have made a pledge. You have made a blood oath that you are committed for life to the mission. And once you've established this in the marrow of your bone, you can take unbelievable damage to the whole. Do you understand? You can take unbelievable damage to the shell. You can nuke it hundreds of times over and the spirit doesn't go down wailing. The, if anything, the spirit gets the pilot light flicked on and it flickers even fucking brighter. And that's what I want to say is that if your spirit, if you ever find your spirit breaking, it's oftentimes because men will confront various men will confront various episodes in the saga of life where they need a good depression. They need a good little battle with despair in order to high hurdle the next obstacle. And there's a reflexive nature in man to resist this, to be a tough guy and not let this shit engulf you, not let it overtake you. But the reality is, is that is extremely disruptive to the energy flow. There comes a point in time where you just have to let the forlorn nature seep all the way in. You got to let yourself slink down into the depression because the way forward, and I want you to pay attention to this, the way forward is oftentimes down, not up. There is a path forward through descendancy. This is very common. We know that, that, that we've seen, and look, this is where the nerd, when someone calls someone a fucking nerd, a nerd is basically someone who's built somewhat of a simplex around the notion that you are supposed to linear, linearly stack wins into ascendancy which we all know is complete bullshit. We all know success is far from linear. That's a fucking video game mindset. That's why it's for nerds. This idea that you just level up, level up, constantly fucking win over and over and over again. Let me tell you something right now. I am so harmonious with my own nature and the way that I do things and the way that I learn that if someone came to me right now and brought this deal to my desk, I would fucking reject it swiftly. If someone came to my desk right now and said, I have a protocol in a market, let's say crypto, I can earn you guaranteed 5% a week. 5% a week, I can earn you guaranteed for the next year. I would turn it down. I'd say, get the fuck out of my office. Because for me, it's soul killing. It's soul killing for me to sit there and fucking grow my portfolio, copy and pasting somebody else's fucking information. I do not have it in me to live that life. I don't give a fuck how much money there is to be made. I don't care. It is going to fucking kill my soul. I know there's a better way. If someone comes to me and tells me they can make me a guaranteed 5% a week, my ego kicks in and I'm like, fuck you. I can find a better way. I can make 10% a week on my own. And I don't give a fuck if it's delusional or not. I will fucking figure out a way to do that. It's always been my way or no way. Always. That's why I haven't. Look, the book that I just wrote, 
it's done in probably two weeks. It's going to be an adjunct to the docuseries. I don't have it in me to sit here and fucking peddle that book. I decided that that book, it's probably the greatest work that I've ever created. I'm going to have to release it for free. I have to. There's something in me that will not allow me to sell a fucking $50 or $100 ebook. It's just off brand. It just does not resonate with me. I cannot sit here. I don't give a fuck if it's a keepsake for my most loyal, hardcore base. I'm going to have to just give that shit away for free because it just doesn't feel right. Something about it just doesn't jive. There's no way I'm peddling a fucking ebook. Everything I do is high, 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 high end. And that's the way it's going to stay. And that's the way it's going to remain. And it goes back to my point. I had another tweet, I believe last week about desperation. There have been times you motherfuckers have no clue where I have gotten absolutely fucking lacerated millions of dollars pissed away. And I was in a very, very agitated, desperate state. And I knew easily my DMS are filled with motherfuckers who are trying to fucking collaborate, have me push products. I, there's nothing in me that can sell out. There's, there's literally no amount of money that will allow me to sell out zero. Like I could be on my fucking last dollar homeless and I ain't fucking selling my ebook. I'm going to hold on for dear life. I will take mountains of more pain to push the thing that I really want to fucking push, which is my full faith and conviction and belief in the fucking heroic mission. That's why I push that shit. I'm never doing it ever. I don't give a fuck if it's a quick buck. I don't give a fuck what it's going to do in the short term. And this has to do with my whole philosophy about letting the past fucking burn, which is the hardest thing for a motherfucker to do, by the way. Let me tell you something. There were times, there were times where I was making so much money hand over fist in the golden times, in the Renaissance times. And the spoilage, the spoilage of speed running and moving so quickly was so astronomical at times, moving so fast, placing wagers so large, pushing my horses out of the stable racing my ponies so fast every fucking day. I'm moving so quickly that I would just be littering, fucking up, making mistakes and leaving fuck tons of money on the table. And I've never looked back. I remember there was a run I was on. It was one of the biggest betting runs. This was a couple years ago. Um, I was so impulsive shipping crypto around, moving money. I was sent, I sent like $86,000 into the abyss. It was supposed to be an ERC 20 token. I sent it on some fucking wrong network exchange sends me some email saying it's not supported. We'll email you when there's support for this particular token. I was like, dude, fuck you. I don't give a fuck about the 86 burned it while it's full of cash burned it just fucking absolutely torching fucking money. Just being reckless because of that abundant mentality. And then I would fall upon hard times and a motherfucker on my team would be like, Hey, remember that money that we sent to that wallet? It's, it's, it's still there. I bet you, we could fucking open a support ticket. I bet we could fucking put some pressure on them, try to get fucking, you know, figure this out. I'm like, dog, that shit happened six months ago. I am, I am on a whole different fucking wavelength. I don't care if that money can save my life. I do not have the mental bandwidth to go backwards. I can't fucking do it. There's nothing in me that will allow me to go try to collect anything that I've left on the table in the past. I remember there was a fucking account that I had that was not KYC'd overseas. And I won like half a million bucks and they wouldn't pay me because I couldn't KYC the account. I just let it burn. Literally, I got half a mil sitting in some account somewhere offshore, some book. I'll never be able to collect the money because I couldn't KYC it. I've had tons of people fucking come to me and be like, yo, we could figure this out. The fuck are you talking about? Figure this out. I'm in a time stream that's moving forward. I don't give a fuck what's sitting there from fucking nine months ago. It's a mental thing. It's a mental thing. I will not allow myself to go backwards because I know the pitfall of that. I know the pit 
that a man can work himself into when he's sitting on his fucking hands and knees waiting for past things to work the fuck out. It's nonsense. One of my favorite fucking scenes in the movie Top Gun, Tom Cruise loses his wingman, Goose, gets killed in the movie. And he's standing, Tom Cruise later in the movie, he's standing in the bathroom. And he's looking in the mirror and he's basically fucking tearing up and he's reflecting on the fact that his buddy just died. And Viper, the, the lieutenant, the headmaster of the elite flight school unit they're in, comes over and he fucking taps him on the shoulder and he's like, you got to let him go, kid. You got to let him go. And it's so simple, but that message has always been so profound to me. You got to let it go, kid. You got to let it go. It, there's, there's, that's like, that's literally classic fucking parochial wisdom. Like if you don't stop moving as a man, there's so many avenues and roads that you could be building that you miss out on. That's the fucking point. And as long as you keep that forward vision, you can correct past mistakes to an order of magnitude that you couldn't fathom. That's the fucking point. It's not about me not going back and trying to collect the 86K that I fucking launched into the fucking ether. It's about the fact that I know that if I erase that from my mind and focus on what I know I'm good at, I can fucking 10X that down the road. But I'm not going to ever engrave a mental groove in my fucking brain chemistry that allows me to hold on to events that are gone. Because the best is always ahead. It is always ahead. And I stand by that. That is a hill that I have seen over and over again. I will die on that fucking hill. The best opportunities are always ahead of you. Always. And it's a fucking superpower. It's a complete fucking superpower. Letting the past be the past and moving forward in the time stream. Because you guys know the type of opportunities that are popping every day around this planet. It's infinite. It's fucking infinite. You know what I'm saying? Loss is finite. There's only so much you can lose. Loss is is a finite figure. But gaining is unlimited. And that's what I want you guys to fundamentally understand. Gaining is, is completely unlimited. There's no ceiling on how much you can gain in life. But there's only so much you can fucking lose. So always fight for the upside. Always. It's a fucking rule of thumb. Let's bring up a question. Let's throw some fucking wrenches in this bad boy. Howdy, Root. What's up, man? Yo. So uh, the mission... I had to step off the pulpit for a second to smoke. Go ahead. Sig break. Um, so the mission I think like a lot of men need to get away from maybe is like uh, they they need like some credit. So like if you're to take like a, a music producer, like, a, you know, the hotshot salesman and stuff, a lot of them, they, they want like that big moment, you know, that big W or like, like let's say they get like a million plays on a song or something like that. <clears throat> But don't you think that like it's not it's it's not fucking about that you know it's like completely the opposite like even if you look at the greatest uh, like you only get that small moment even if you were to hit that to celebrate and it's only and it's going to be a very personal thing to where you're not really um, like sharing that with the whole world almost even to, uh, like maybe you have one night with your woman or something or your boys and you celebrate but like um, yeah I just want to get your thoughts on that like how how uh, like it's kind of inhibiting to the process of the mission, how these men, they want some credit or something uh, in terms of their mission when they haven't even achieved anything yet. A hundred percent. So, I mean, it kind of, exactly. So it's kind of circular logic here, but th- that is correct. So how it works is this, it's these, these experiences that men subject themselves to, they accumulate exponentially kind of like a snowball. And so when I'm sitting in a business meeting, and let's say I've just been cold clocked for $10 million and I don't even have a penny in my pocket. You best believe if you put me in a business meeting pitted neck and neck with some fucking guy who just inherited 5 million, who has zero life experience, 
you bet your ass when it comes to negotiations, I'm the better horse to bet on because I'm sitting there in that fucking room with my accumulated experience. I am very steady internally because I've seen gruesome, horrific things. I have exposure to experiences. I've survived those things. One of the most important things that a man can ever do is call upon his past experience. If you know you did something in the past then you can do it again, that's the power of being a man. And so when someone has a newly lifted experience and they come into a massive sum of money without technically earning it, they're fucked. Because like I said in that tweet, it just makes you shinier. So the guy who goes for the smash hit, like you said, musically, he's just going to look fucking shinier. But internally, he doesn't really have that calibration of aura. Look, the body is magical, as I've always said. I trust the organism. It's funny how your body will calibrate to hit home runs and grand slams when it's your last chance, when you're down to your last penny. Like, you cannot simulate a flight or fight response. There's, there's really no emulation for this. It has to be a raw experience. That's why I've always said a man really doesn't transform until he has to, until he's down to his last pinch. Then the body and mind become one, like the Buddhists say. And this, the body will, will literally have you start smacking things out of the fucking park because you don't have a choice. You don't have a fucking choice. So the guy in the business meeting who's just got the fucking cavalcade of experience, he's the better horse. He's the better horse because he's sitting there. The indentations, the impressions of life have made themselves known on his skin. It's in his fuck. It's in the, the egg whites of his pupils. It's in his eyeballs. You know what I mean? Like you, you know it when you see it. Stupidity is very rare. Stupidity is actually rarer than you guys think. Uh, crowds know what, what's going on. Crowds know what's up. You know what I mean? There's wisdom in a crowd. So if you take a crowd of stupid people, they might not be able to articulate what they see. But viscerally, they know truth from non-truth. And that's what I'm telling you. That's why as a man, your aura is the inescapable, ineffable thing that you should be in search of. Because it's, fa- it's, the, it's the fountainhead. You know what I'm saying? Ayn Rand, she said the fountainhead was the male ego. No, 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 no. It's the aura. It's the fucking aura. And there ain't no life hack for aura except exposure to gruesome events. That's it. It's the name of the game. Damn straight. Yeah, you got to be tough. There's no other speakers up here either, but uh, I was like pondering about um, like if you were to put in the realm you against Marcus Aurelius, like how you would probably obliterate him and just, and uh, if you were to run Rome, I'd much rather have you. That shit would be funny as hell. Yeah, man. I mean, look, it's, it's just interesting. Like the more I publish content, the more I get DMS of people comparing me. Like I, I get constant comparisons and parallels and lines drawn between me and people who've made great works. And I find it ironic because most of these motherfuckers I've never even heard of. I've never scoured their work. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. But my point is, when you live life in a hardcore way and you live on the edge, you come. Ac- there's only a couple good ideas in life. You know what I'm saying? Like, there really is. There's, most ideas are garbage. And the best ideas float to the top. And if you can blaze your way to the top solo and once you break through, there's really only a couple good ideas to wrestle with. And all the greats eventually kind of come to the same conclusions on everything. It's just how it works. Yep. Anyway, bro, I appreciate you. I'm going to keep it moving. All right, later, brother. Yo, Jalen. What up, bro? Can you hear me? Yeah. By the way, this thing's a battle of entropy. I started this show. My battery was at like 10%. So we're just going to go until this thing clips off. Go ahead. All right. So my main question is about the shiny object syndrome. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. I it's the apex that- philosophy. It's the apex philosophy. 100%. So- no doubt about it. I just wanted your thoughts on that because a lot of people in this space um, talk about sticking with one thing and doing that until you get really good at it, right? So what are your yeah, thoughts? Yeah, but what so are, they're wrong. Are, 
they're okay. they're wrong because the bet the best things that happen in life are from detours. And that's my point is that in life, a lot of times you have to take a detour in order to find an avenue or find a perspective that you couldn't otherwise find before. And that's how it works. It's it's synonymous to the pirate who fails miserably. Half of his fucking crew on the ship gets dysentery. They have dyspepsia. They get wiped out by a bubonic plague. And then the guys who are still standing come across fucking treasure in Aladdin's cave. That's very much how life works. And the, 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 the whole, my whole point about why chasing what's shiny is the apex philosophy is because it's the panacea for all pathologies. If you're constantly diverted, it, it kind of, it, it's kind of a, an analog to my point about the two pathways to success for men are basically being incredibly horny or incredibly depressed because when you're horny as fuck, you have no choice, but to funnel sexual energy into, into your craft, right? There's only so much fucking you can do per day. So the rest of the time, if you're a fucking viral male, then you're going to be obviously channeling that energy into, into honing your craft. And that obviously comes from sexual energy. So it's similar with the chasing what's shiny thing. You're going to take detours. You're going to take fucking, there's decoy, there's fucking decoys. There's fucking dead ends. There's a lot of twists and turns in life and alleyways that men are afraid to go down. But if you're constantly chasing what's shiny, you kind of become one with your body. Life is now lived within the senses. You don't have time to sit there and try to make incisions and drill holes in your personality. There's no time for that bullshit. You got to play the hand that you have because things are moving so fucking rapidly. You know what I mean? You're, you're, you're basically exercising that rapid hand eye coordination. You're, you're working your fast twitch muscles. You're working on the fly. You're improvising. You know what I'm saying? It's somewhat like a cat chasing a laser. It's like a cat chasing a laser. All of your senses, you're firing on all cylinders. And that's what I usher men to do. If all of your pistons are firing as a man and you're firing on all cylinders, in a lot of ways, you're putting your conscious mind to sleep. You're putting your conscious mind to sleep. The best time to put your conscious mind to sleep is right before bed. And men have this reversed. A lot of men, as they're getting ready for bed, that's when they like to jog through their, their thoughts. And that's when they like to kind of cycle through and pan through their thoughts and kind of get prepared for the next day. I say that's bullshit. I say right before bed is when you turn everything off in your brain and let the subconscious, which has more computational power than you can possibly fathom, let that shit do the processing. And then you wake up and your brain is actually solving problems and working out ideas and issues while you're sleeping. And that's why sometimes people wake up with a very fresh perspective. It feels almost divine. Like you'll just wake up on a random morning You'll feel like the weather changed and you'll feel like a whole new man. Well, that's the power of the subconscious at work. You know what I mean? In your sleep, your brain is solving catastrophic problems for you on your behalf. And so I believe that you should not interfere with that process. You know okay. what I mean? A lot, of, a lot of things get worked out in sleep. So, so while is, you're – sorry, bro. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. So, so the apex philosophy while you're awake, right, is just to keep it moving, have as much experience as you can, you know, expose yourself to as much as you can. Is that correct? Well, you need to have, you need to have a lot of things coming at you because your mind, you need to basically be overwhelmed and bewildered on a daily basis. This is why I said the, the greatest state that a man can be in is just overwhelmed and bewildered because the, it's, it's, it's way too much for the brain to handle your brain. Your, you know, there has to be like a malfunction in the neocortex. That's what I'm telling you because the subconscious is far more brilliant than you are. It'll work out problems. And you know, this is why, like, and I do want to make clarity on this. When I talked about how the shell of the human is very thick and it can take a lot of damage. The one thing you really don't want to fuck with too much is the diet. Because spirit is connected to gut health. And if your gut is way too fucked up, that does have a deleterious impact on the spirit. And so you kind of get my drift, right? Like if you overwhelm your conscious mind, in many ways you draw forth the animal within the man. 
And, and I am all about that. I think the uncivilized aspect of a man is his most powerful self. You want to talk about highest self. You want to talk about the higher angels. It's the animal within the man. It's, it's, it supersedes, it supersedes the conscious mind. The conscious mind is very dumb, slow, and gay. And I do want to make that clear. I don't give a fuck how, how smart you are. There is an intelligence level in man where it actually becomes a severe handicap. You know what I mean? Because the, the, the problem is really smart people are very self-deceptive. Very self-deceptive. And the unconscious mind is always going to strive for the optimal way for you to survive. You know, so that's, that's my point is like optimization is built into this bitch. You don't have to make piecemeal or patchwork of any of these systems. You don't have to make a science out of approaching women. There's a way to circumvent that. There's a way to prevaricate and swerve around all that shit. And that's just to become the best at your craft. Then you achieve all of what you're trying to achieve. You achieve it obliquely. You achieve it laterally. You know what I'm saying? It's like I always said, you can't have a goal of just wanting a Lambo and a mansion in the Alps. That don't make sense. There's no direct path to that. Everything you want in life is lateral. You get it along the way of climbing the summit. And as a man, you should never be dazzled by your own success. You should, if, if your own success is bedazzling you, you're in trouble. Because it means you've skipped steps and you're probably getting to a, to a very scary tipping point where you're going to piss it all away. Like nothing that has come my way success wise has ever shocked me. It was like, duh, I knew it was time for this. That makes a lot of sense, bro. Thank you. You got it. Bang, bang. Yo, Spencer. Spencer, you're up. Yo, Zachy. What's up, bro? What's up, man? I wanted to get your take on personal limits of potential and if they even exist and if they do, why? Because I think, at least for a lot of the guys in this space, like, most are going to have ambitions way beyond what the average person can even conceive of, like would even be comfortable for them to think about. And I just want to get your take on that, like what you've had, seen in your experience of how guys end up playing out with what they're pursuing. Amplify that a little bit. So like a lot of guys, I think, which is great, have really, 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 really big ambitions. And then some people might come along and call those delusions of grandeur or whatever, like, for whatever reason they might have to feel better about whatever their, their goals are. But I want to know if you think there is actually a point where it might become delusional based on the person, like the specific person that's pursuing what they've picked. And if so, does that point come about? Or does that not even exist? And is it purely about what you kind of forge into your own life and you just kind of find out what your potential is anyway in hindsight? Yeah, I would say that's true. It's kind of like I said last week in one of my videos, I was talking about how you basically only have to touch, you only have to reach out and touch success for just a second. Like you don't even need to hover there for long. You just got to reach a big goal and it's, it's so thinly veiled. You know what I mean? Like snatching 300 pounds, standing up. That's just a fucking millisecond of glory. You know what I mean? But that's something that I've done. So that's been crystallized and there's like an overlay. It's overarched into my personality. It's interwoven into the fabric and structure of it. And no one can take that away. But I think, I think what actually deters most people from achieving what they want is seeking the approval of everybody else around them. That's, that's the most difficult part because when you are blazing your own trail, there definitely is an alienation process where you actually have to become alienated from the people who are giving you advice like how do you how do you give advice to someone who goes in on a daily basis and figures things out on their own there, there comes a point where that advice just becomes completely nullified 
Like you have your own, you just kind of have your own way of doing things that just kind of sets upon you. Like how can anyone come in and, 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 and wipe that away? I think most guys are definitely, definitely looking for some sort of superintendent to guide them along the way rather than, than the original method, which is the primal method of just trial and error of, of self-experimentation. You know what I mean? And that's, that's like the gym is a great sort of fundamental, like the purpose of the gym in my eyes is just to become a behemoth. Like to push yourself to a state of exhaustion and fatigue where you're sort of just kind of have a flat expression on your face. And, and that's, that's what's always worked for me. Like for me, the high of the gym was never the physique. It was never even particularly the strength. It was just beating myself up to a point where you're kind of in a stupefied, despondent state of being where when you exit that gym, you're just so fucking tired that the subconscious just takes over. And yeah. I think that a lot of these battlegrounds, like the purpose of that is just to constantly jade yourself. Like you're, you're just exposing yourself to so much overwhelming data and information that you don't even want to process it. You kind of become dumb. You kind of become dumb. And that is the best way to go through life is kind of in a dumb, numb state. And that's what, that's where all the miracles happen. That makes sense. So yep. when you were on your journeys, like in, would you say you were like, you weren't overly anticipatory about the future? You were just kind of like day to day, how much can I push it today? Trial and error kind of thing. Because I think for a lot of guys, when they have massive goals, the objective, like everyone says, like obviously like fall in love with the process and all that stuff. But I think that kind of doesn't make too much sense if you have, because you're doing this stuff for the goals in the end, in the first place, right? Like you do want to get to that final achieved outcome. So how do you approach it that way? Like, do you kind of stop, obsessing over the outcome because like, obviously you want to you want to make it happen and fall in love in love or well, not in love but like in alignment with the day-to-day -day. just start with the process like how did you approach that exactly it's kind of like i think men like as i'm sitting here and as i'm just kind of reflecting on it like you you as a man you you the really the only solace you really have is in your own strength it's really like the only, the only self-gratifying mechanism, the only tool that a man really has to cope with is just knowing how tough and how strong he is deep down. Not on a physical level, but on a metaphysical level. Like the things that you've done, the things that you've seen, the things that you've withstood, that's where your confidence kind of beams from. And so when I talk about a man being in that resting pose and kind of emanating that energy, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about it coming from just touching the top of the summit just for a split second and then coming back down. I mean, the, the weird thing about life is that the highest of highs cannot be, they're not exciting unless you've actually been dragged through the pits of hell. Like you, most of your year, most of your calendar year should be relatively harrowing. It should be, you should be struggling, I would say. And, and the, the golden moments, they don't last very long. They're not supposed to. But they're supposed to be extracted. Like the juice is supposed to be squeezed at maximum. The, the, the best moments of your life are a blur. They're just a very, very quick little fucking um, magnesium light in the sky for just a split second. And what makes those moments worth it is all the hell and all the fucking dues that you paid along the way. I truly believe that like it's, it's not natural. It's not normal for a man to be in a constant state of euphoria and in the highs. There's something, something fundamentally went very wrong there. If that's the case. Yeah. Yeah. It makes complete sense. I get that in it right now. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yo, can you hear me? Yo. Yep. All right. So, Talking about falling from your peak or falling from your peak at uh, a few years ago, I hit 500 K on TikTok, just running up the finance wave of crypto in 2020. And now with TikTok shop, I'm not sure if you're aware, I'm trying to get back and just start stacking cash. I think I self-sabotaged my way from that peak. And you were talking about how when you were running up crypto and you had wallets across seas without KYC, you just let it all burn. And I'm wondering if I should, start fresh or try to relive that and 
because I know deep down that I can re em recreate that success. And I just want your take on that. Recreate that success using the same method? Not necessarily. I guess I guess recreating myself because I'm only 17. I have so much ahead. Yeah. So look, as as men. I think I think the fundamental thing that men really struggle with is men do not know how to fix one element of their life. And that's why I think women are the best barometer. Women ultimately are the best gauge for a man, because if you end up with like the wrong girl, for example, that's just a symptom that your whole life is fucked up, which is why I said when a man is with the wrong woman, he will bomb every he will carpet bomb every part of his life until there's nothing left until there's a dithering because once that woman walks away then a man can truly rebirth and reconstruct himself from the ashes men are terrible at just fixing one aspect that's broken of their life and it's very intuitive if a man senses that something's off within himself he has a natural inclination to just want to fucking nuke everything and start over but you know what i mean it's like fume it's like fumigation it's like pest control you fucking fumigate the entire fucking house. It's like napalming an ant farm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you don't have to use napalm to kill an ant farm, but overkill seems to be the successful method for a lot of men who are stuck and struggling. And that's just what I've witnessed. So the woman, like, having a bad woman, having a bad anything is usually a symptom of a larger problem. And it's kind of like chemotherapy. Like, you just... Men like to apply radiation to everything in order to kill everything down to the bone you got to nuke those fucking cells and then start over like i don't i don't i've never really seen men be able to troubleshoot on like a piece by piece basis yeah absolutely and so i think you're going through that where like you're sensing something's off and so you're talking about recreating yourself that usually comes that's usually at loggerheads with someone who wants to fucking start completely fresh but the beauty of it is is like i talked about a lot of these experiences get do get embroidered in the core and those don't go those don't go away so materially you can start on a fresh plane but you do have that wisdom and experience which is why i said as you as life gets look this is what i believe i think as a man as you get older your life should be getting more complex not easier things should be getting more baroque Things should be getting more Baroque as you get older because you have that wisdom to fall back on. It's like one of my posts that I did. I've been an athlete for 20 years. I'm to a point now where I could truly eat pizza probably every day for six months, not lift, not touch a weight, and I'll still probably look like fucking Hercules because that's who I am now. That's who I am now. I am an athlete. So if I stop doing that, it's still who I am. But that doesn't work in reverse. If a motherfucker goes to the gym for six months and then stops, he's not going to look like an athlete in a month from now. Yeah. And so and a, I, lot of the, a lot of this shit is just foundational. A lot of this shit is just foundational. I think that's what the 20s is for, man. The 20s is about just securing that foundation because you can really do all the hardcore voyaging and exploring as you get older. You can take bigger risks. You can take more shots. Everyone thinks you can take it when you're young. I think it's the opposite. I think once you have that foundation, you have a lot more latitude. You have a lot more rope to, to, to fuck with. Yeah, for sure. I feel like the falling from your peak, would you say it also plays into the ego? Because you just know that it's somewhere within you that you can reach that and you can almost recreate it just because you know you've proven to yourself almost that you're capable yeah, you can just turn the jets on at any time. Like you can yeah. flip, you can flip that switch and turn it on. And that that's the interesting thing about life is like guys will go through a malaise. Guys will go through a foggy, hazy period of their life where they really are sort of demotivated. And I think this happens to talented people because the timing just doesn't feel right. There's something in them that just doesn't want to, you know, march forward stridently to sort of tackle these problems. And then one morning you wake up. And I have a feeling this is a subconscious mechanism where, like I said, the air, there's something in the air that just feels different. And then you go and hack and slash every problem in your way and you, and you knock it all out in fucking 24 hours. And now you're back on the saddle cruising again. And so it's like, and that, that happens to people who are obsessive on, on one particular monolithic mission. Like I said, like you can go through a five month drought 
where you're just absolutely swinging and missing left and fucking right. And you're still, your spirit is still intact. And everyone's looking at you like, how could you possibly be living in these conditions? It's like, cause you just know one day you're going to wake up and just fucking tackle everything. Absolutely. All right. Thank you for the talk. Thank yep. you, bro. Hammond. Alex, you're up. Come on, fellas. Zuzu. Zuzu, you're live. Third time's a charm. Bounce. Hey, what's up, Root? Hello? What's up, man? I'm here. Yo, up, fire away. Dog, you gotta be kidding me. Yo, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi, Root. Sorry about Let's that. Go. Yo. Let's go. Keep it rolling. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, I've got a question. So, how how important do you think it is as a man to purposely and intentionally sort of burn bridges and, and fuck up on purpose, whether it's in your life or your job or just trying new things, especially in your early 20s? It's the most important part to do it. I mean, look, there's, there is a, there's a method that I think is tried and tested. And that's that in your twenties, you can do this very easily where you're moving so quickly. Your, 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 your pace is so abrupt that effectively, like even when it comes to dates, dating, you can be moving so rapidly that you basically give people an opportunity to hop on the caboose on your train and your train's moving so quickly that if motherfuckers, if they, if someone misses a meeting with you, they're left in the dust. You know what I'm saying? I did this yeah. for like 10 years. I did this for like 10 years. I would ambush someone on the fly and be like, yo, meet me at X time at X location. And if they weren't there, there was no rescheduling. I'm just, I'm plowing forward. And that's actually a fucking fantastic fucking dating strategy because you'll end up with the most loyal writers on earth like that. Like I would just spring it on. I would just spring it on someone and be like, hey, meet me here. If you ain't meeting me here, you are completely fucking dusted and I ain't looking back. And it would just be fucking it would be totally, totally haphazard. It would be hapless the way I would spring it on them. And then that's how you really do find the people that are rocking with you. You know what I mean? Like, there's just yeah. no looking over your shoulder. You know, some of the best advice, I'll tell you this, some of the best advice, there's an adage uh, for people that have vertigo, people that are climbing heights. They, they tell you, don't look down, right? When you're climbing, never look down. Well, that's fucking fantastic life advice. Like, there's times where things are going so wrong on your journey that if you look down for just a split second or look over your shoulder, you're going to be so fucking petrified that you'll freeze in place. And like, if you want to actually get things done and correct history, because remember the past is malleable. The past is interchangeable depending on what you're doing now. There, there is ways to salvage history and rewrite it in your favor, but you can't look down and you can't look over your shoulder. It's too terrifying. You know what I mean? Sometimes you're just so high up. You got no choice but to just keep fucking trucking, which goes back to my parable about me letting my spoilage, you know, having high spoilage 
is really one of the biggest indicators of success for a man. Like, there's going to be a lot of mistakes, but I think a lot of guys don't understand that mistakes are big leverage. There's a lot of leverage and a lot of big levers and pulley systems that you can put in place from making big fuck-ups because you can draw attention to a problem and your entire body will force itself to tackle that. Does that make sense? I don't think people understand the power of a big fuck-up. No, the power of a big fuck-up allows you to sort of redouble your efforts and, and actually fucking not only correct the mistake, but way overshoot it. Way overshoot it and make it better than it ever would have been had you not committed that fuck-up or that transgression. This is very common. This that, is very common. Yeah, that makes sense. Because the thing is, right, for me... When I, when I think about these things, it's I always perform the best when I'm under pressure or loads of things are fucked up or my car is broken or this and that. And in that week, I'll perform the best I'll ever have, whether it's at the gym, whether it's at life on my job. And I almost feel like I'm always chasing that feeling to just keep fucking up, to keep making mistakes, to keep burning bridges. And would you say that's the right thing to do? I mean, yeah, but the burning bridges thing will just happen kind of naturally. Like, if your goals are lofty enough, there's, you're going to be incinerating things by mistake along the way. But the beauty of that is, is like I told you before, the, story, the story's not over yet. Yeah. The, story, the story is never really hard-coded. So you can always not only correct a mistake, but, I mean, dude, redemption is one of the most beautiful aspects of life. You know what I mean? I mean, men live for redemption. Men live to redeem themselves. It's one of the most powerful forces on earth. And so if you've made a lot of mistakes, you know, I'm the first to raise my hand. I've made more mistakes than almost anybody that I know in my life. However, my ability to move forward and to correct those mistakes is unfucking paralleled. It might take me fucking two years to do it. It might take me a year to do it, but eventually it's going to get done. Eventually, it's going to fucking get done. And that's, that's just the bottom line. And if you know that and you're steadfast in that, then you understand that you really can't make a mistake. That's, that's perfect, man. Yeah, thanks for that. Yep. Cheer, cheers, Bruce. Thanks for having me. Yep, cheers. <clears throat> Yo, Bilal. Bilal, come on, man. Can't come up, come, can't come up here with fucking stage fright like this. Oh, shit. My bad, boo. How you been, man? Let's go. How okay. you going? Let's go. Phenomenal. Uh, earlier, bro, Bounce was on here, and he said, how important is it to fuck your shit up in order to kind of let it keep going, right? My question is, doesn't that kind of happen on the way itself? You just, if you're just living hard enough, doesn't it just kind of happen on its own? Isn't everything just kind of breaking apart, getting fucked up on its own? Yeah, of course. I mean, look, men are deconstructionists at heart. Mm -hmm. That's what we are. We understand. Men only understand life when things break. Uh -huh. You understand? And this, this is true for hearts, mm -hmm. psyches, mechanisms. Men really gain a, a very vast understanding of how the world works only when things are broken. Children have this natural proclivity. Children will break toys. They have a natural, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, it just kind of goes back to the Thomas Hobbes, John Locke dichotomy. Huh. Man, is man born good or bad? I mean, look, there's, there's a case to be made that men are born bad and, are lear and learn to be good. Children, if you put a fucking insect in front of them, their natural urge is to make a fist and smash it to pieces. And it's only through parenting and guidance that they're told that that's not the way of going about things. So we're naturally wired to smash things apart to understand the inner workings. That's just how nature works. And especially for men, that is the masculine imperative. You only understand how the heart beats and ticks once it gets, you know, broken. Once it gets fucking lambasted. Mm -hmm. It's the only way you understand the heart and, and these, these emotions and these mechanisms. No. Nah. Very well said. Uh, it's through it's it's through deconstruction. 
is there ever a level or a point where it's too much deconstruction? How do you manage to get a hold of that? Yeah, I mean, of course. I mean, that's why you got to have wins under your belt. I mean, it's important. That's why I'm saying, like, along the way of these lofty goals, you're definitely, as a byproduct of attacking lofty goals, you're definitely going to hit some big fucking hits along the way. You're going to. You're going to pick up a broad. You're going to fucking find yourself in a fancy car. Mm -hmm. But it's just going to be an oops kind of aha moment. And you can't even hold on to that shit for too long. You know what I mean? There does have to be this sort of earthly detachment to success. Um, dude, winning winning is an immaterial thing in a lot of ways. No doubt, it's an it's it's an immaterial mm-hmm. thing. It's 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 sort of metaphysical. Um, obviously, the game never stops rotating. The game board never stops shifting. Mm-hmm. But I just think that multitasking is kind of a feminine thing. I think that men do need to harp and dwell on pretty much one goal, one big fucking juicy goal. And then kind of everything that you want just kind of falls into place along the way is what I want to say. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've experienced that. No, you're right. I've experienced that. Look, I mean, look, dude, nature, nature is so fucking powerful. Mm -hmm. one of my most controversial opinions that I've been kind of floating out right Mm now, I don't think parenting, I don't think parenting has near the impact that people think it does. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You're you're kind of, you're you're kind of a tour guide on a safari to a degree. Mm -hmm. You can point that you can point things out. You can see things in the shrubbery and in the bushes and in the cut that maybe that a child can't see. But ultimately, I do think nature prevails. I don't think you can suffocate the seeds of death. I couldn't agree more. I do. The kid yeah, does always like you find its own way. Your kid's always going to fucking figure it out and become who they're supposed to become. There's, there's very, very little interference. I think people put way too much stock in parenting. Mm-hmm. Um, and look, what's interesting about the human organism is that if you're missing one of the cofactors of a nuclear family, let's say you have an absent father or even an absent mother, you can reverse the roles. Nature is so clever that what it'll do is it'll implant weapons in the psyche in order to compensate for that. And obviously you've seen a lot of single parent homes. A lot of men end up stabbing themselves with that edge, but nature does sort of fabricate this sort of Frankensteinian experiment on men who don't have the proper roles put in place. Nature will make you, it'll give you a fucking personality quirk to make up for that. And if you don't learn how to harness it, that's where people go seriously wrong. It's almost like nature will find a way to, to give you a dad. If you don't have one, it'll fucking implant it in your psyche one way or another. You will, your, your, your weapons will be sharpened. You will be given a lance with which to go forward. And it's just up to you on how you're going to use that weapon. You're going to use it against yourself or are you going to fucking use it to carve your legacy in stone? You know what I mean? It's a choose your own adventure. It's an ad lib that is very open for interpretation. And it's up to the artist to orchestrate that. Beautiful. That's the beauty of nature. Thank you, bro. You got it. Mr. Matt Robinson. Hello. Yo. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Hey, bro. So my question is that, so currently I'm in college and when shit goes wrong, I don't have anyone behind me to protect me. I know it sounds, you know, retarded to depend on someone, but, you know, everybody has brothers Everybody has people to, you know, look behind them when shit goes wrong. When you don't have that, how do you build that up? Or what do you do exactly? What do you think about it? Well, the first question is, why don't you have that? Why don't you have a support system? Mm. Like, how how did you get there? I mean, I don't know. It's... 
you know i live in college right and it's people are totally different here and like you know i'm just focused on you know hustling making money and shit like that and probably they don't relate to me that much i mean i i do have good friends i do have amazing friends but these are not the people that you know when shit goes wrong they don't they're not going to come and protect me or some shit like that mhm mm. i know it sounds like uh sounds weird to depend on someone but you know it's just a thing i've been thinking about these past few days that i don't have a you know good brotherhood with anyone 